Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. And we've got four great decks for you today one featuring Silver Sable, one featuring Symbiote Spider Man, and two that are for those of you who did not get the new card. As is tradition for the first day of the new season, we're going to begin by featuring the deck that finished the previous season at number one on the Infinite Leaderboard. This deck is still extremely strong. I took it into ladder and had absolutely no trouble winning games. We featured this deck a week and a half ago or so with one major change. It was running Carnage over Killmonger. At high infinite, Zoo has become a force, so Killmonger ended up replacing Carnage. Where you are in the ladder, unless you're sitting at the top of the leaderboard, you're very much more likely to still be facing a lot of junk than a lot of... um, Excuse me, to be facing a lot of junk than a lot of Zoo. If that is the case for where you are, please feel free to keep that as Carnage. However, if you have the cards for this deck, this is, again, the number one deck of the previous season and is still one of the very best things in Marvel Snap that you could possibly be doing with your deck slots. So Derek is no longer Havoc OP. He changed his name just to Derek because he got sick of confusing people with the um, different name thing, but it is now just Derek. He was number one in August, my birth month, so I'm especially partial to that. Also, Derek's just a really nice person. I like Derek a lot. Nico for this list can be Iceman or Spider-Ham. Kate can be Carnage. Mobius is so good, but you can try Cosmo. You can end up, if you have Kate, but don't have Mobius, you can try Carnage. Mobius is secretly one of the best cards right now in Marvel Snap, though. There's a lot of people trying to cheat out stuff with Ravona, cheat out Mockingbirds, use that extra Sasquatch, and Mobius gives you an answer to that. You need Man-Thing, Mockingbird, and Sasquatch for this list, and I know that, um, I mean, okay, Man Thing is Series 4, so you have a reasonable chance of just getting that with tokens. Mockingbird is currently in spotlights, and if you don't have Mockingbird, Mockingbird is one of the best cards in Marvel Snap. Please go get Mockingbird. I know a lot of you don't have Sasquatch. I'm sorry that that's a gate on this deck. I'm not in charge of releasing and selling cards. It's the best I can do. This is the number one list. All right, so turn one, you want to play Hood, generally speaking. Sometimes you will play Nico. You're looking to Nico if you're going to either Mysterio or Hood. You can turn that into a demon or draw two. Outside of that, you're usually holding Nico for later. Uh, turn two is usually Mysterio, especially if you have Sasquatch or Man Thing in hand. The reason you're playing Mysterio early if you have Sasquatch or Man Thing is A, you usually have a three. Usually you're going to want to drop Mobius, Luke, or Viper. Um, you can, if you're Mysterio, Mysterioing, you can end up Vipering over Mysterio clone just fine without any real trouble there. And at that point, it gets hard to fit Mysterio in, and Mysterio is extremely important for Mockingbird later on. So you want to make sure that you can fit Mysterio into your curve if humanly possible. If you can Mysterio Sasquatch, that is a snap condition right there. You are now way ahead of curve, and even if they end up shonking you, the loss of tempo as you're doing extremely powerful things while they're playing a 4-3 ends up being worth it. Um, Just do yourself a favor and don't play both the 6-10s in the same lane. Turn three is the appropriate three for the match. Generally speaking, I aim for Luke Cage, um, unless I know Mobius is going to be insane. Like, if I'm playing um, a lot of different decks, I think, like, there's just enough negative locations, there's enough man thing, there's enough Ajax around that I've found that Luke Cage is very, very strong right now. Turn four, you drop man thing if possible. If not, you're doing a three and something else. You're also fine at this point doing the Mysterio thing here. Mysterio with another card. Turn 5, as long as you've played anything, you can Sasquatch. If you can Sasquatch and a 2 because you played Mysterio, that's amazing. But um, it's Sasquatch generally or a 3 plus a 2 if you didn't get Sasquatch down earlier. All right, and then turn 6 is Mockingbird and Shadow King or something along those lines. Shadow King is extremely strong right now. Not only is Shadow King great in the previous meta, but right now there is a ton of Symbiote Spider-Man around and Shadow King as an answer to that is stellar. All good. This was the number one deck. This was our look at it. We're going to do a quick set of announcements. We're going to do a bundle review and a whole bunch of, well, like three bundle reviews and a whole bunch of stuff today. But uh, before we get to that, we're going to take one less look at this. Oh, pretty deck, right? This is actually a really powerful, effective deck. Again, number one on the infinite leaderboard. Props to Derek for coming up with this weird synergy that doesn't look like it would work. Like Luke Cage for sort of just man thing, Viper for sort of just hood, but everything has that sort of extra little layer of usefulness that makes it really sing and it answers so much of the metagame. Brilliant deck. We're gonna I'm gonna ask you to sub and we're gonna talk a little bit about that, and then we're gonna get right back with the Galactus deck that is all over the meta right now.
So I'm going to ask you to please hit that sub button if you're willing. We do seven days a week of Marvel Snap videos. Six days are deck guide videos. We give you at least three brand new decks every single weekday at the start of the season. So we're mostly going to be doing four new decks every single weekday. If you're interested in keeping on top of the meta with the most new decks from proven top players of anyone, this is the channel for you. We just did the number one deck. We're going to do another deck from a top 100 player. Uh, then we're going to do another deck from a previous metas um, top player. Like These are just legitimately great decks. If you're interested in finding and staying on top of these decks, please hit that sub button. We're trying to hit 15,000 subs by the end of the year. Right below me, you can see a little YouTube button. All you, you don't have to leave the page. All you have to do is click it and you're subbed and it would help us out so freaking much. In addition, we're doing the biggest giveaway in all of Marvel Snap every single season. We give away 10 season passes the first two weeks and then we give away five, uh, sorry, one more every week thereafter. So we gave away five already. All you have to do in order to win a season pass, basically every video this week from yesterday's to I want to say Sunday's something, math, I don't know, English teacher, don't stress that. But uh, every video this week, basically, as long as you are subbed, I'm at some point in this video going to tell you to leave a comment. You like, you leave, whatever that specific comment is, you ask whatever that specific question is, you're entered to win a season pass. Each day's comments comes with its own season pass winner. So hopefully you sub, hopefully you enter, hopefully you win, and hopefully you find value in the content along the way. In addition, we have a giant tournament. I'm not going to tell you all about it right now because this video is jam freaking packed and work started. So I got to get to bed soon because I got to be up at like five in the morning. But we are hosting a giant freaking tournament where you only have to play one game a week. You can win both season passes and five hundred dollars in prizes. Pause this screen. Do what it says. You will not be sad to have done so. I promise people love the Snap Judgments League. All right. Did somebody say Galactus? Yeah, Avazord messaged me this Galactus list. Uh, Avazord is Brazil's top player. He's often been in the top 10 and 20 of the Infinite Leaderboard. He often competes and wins major tournaments. This is an absolutely stellar player. So earlier today, um, I've got the exact quote on a later slide. Earlier today, I'm literally at work. It's my first day of teaching again. And I get like, I start getting like all caps messages from Ava. And I don't usually get, like Ava gets excited sometimes, but never like just a bunch of all caps. She's like, I think this is real, I think this is real. So I try it out, yeah, this is real. This is like the best Galactus has been since it became a 6-5 by an awful freaking lot. Um, we're gonna go over how to play it, but this is a Galactus list. There is another version, I'm gonna show it to you momentarily, that is um, a Galactus and a bunch of other stuff version that I think is, honest to God, uh, just worse. I think that this version is straight up better, it's more effective, it's more powerful, and it's more consistent than the Dara version. I'm going to show you that Dara version, because usually we do a ton of replacements for these decks. Well, if you need replacements, just sort of smash these two decks together, you'll be fine. All you really need, as far as high series stuff, are Galactus and Symbiote Spidey, and you can make this happen. This is the Dara version. You'll note that we have an extra six drop in Arnim Zola, and we have two extra five drops in Black Panther and White Tiger, all of those are extremely powerful cards in this deck, right? None, you're not sad to have any of that because you can go Wong Panther Zola. You can go uh, Panther Symbiote Spider-Man Zola and win games, right? You can go Wong Namora, Wong White Tiger, and then Odin those for a ton of extra power and win games that way. There's a lot of power to this, but this is because you're not doing anything for so long in the game. Um, this version ends up just feeling so much more disruptible than the other, and that's really kind of frustrating and annoying. So I personally prefer the Ava version. Dara's brilliant. I'm sure Dara's version works great. I didn't, I found it clunkier because it was just heavy. It felt heavy, if that makes sense to everyone. Cool. Let's go forward with some turn by turn. And again, we're doing the turn by turn for the Ava version, which is currently my preferred version. Um, I think Ravona does a lot. Ravona and Sage fundamentally do a lot to even this out. Um, okay, so the message, the exact message i got from ava there were more there was more to it but my favorite is the all caps message with this text is this is a thing so this is a thing um check it out turn one is generally speaking nico as long as the spell is halfway decent turn two is ravona over jeff unless you think you might be doing a namora game plan and then jeff is a little bit better turn three you would really like to get magic down you're also fine playing cast or kind of a naked sage if you're playing a naked sage you can put wong on top of it you're also perfectly fine playing symbiote spider-man after that, if you're not seeing the Galactus thing, what you can do, so um, 
is you can drop Wong on Symbiote Spider-Man on Sage, trigger it, it's going to then trigger the Sage on Wong and then sort of start re-triggering it. Cool? Does that make sense to everybody? So you Sage on whatever, then you play um, Spider on it, then you play Wong, and after Wong, you activate Symbiote Spider-Man. Symbiote Spider-Man then triggers reactivating Sage, re-reactivating Sage, and all of a sudden, at the end of turn five, you just have like this ridiculous Sage. It's really, really powerful. Um, that makes me want Taskmaster in the build, but that's greedy. Uh, I told Avon, he was like, stop being greedy. That, don't, play, don't make the deck too heavy. Fine, but I've got Ravona, so uh, whatever. Um, you can also, obviously, play Spider-Man alone. If you play Spider-Man alone, your goal is to buff it with Nomura. After you've buffed it with Nomura, you play Galactus, and then you trigger the Activate. You've now got a 5 plus uh, 6. You've got an 11 power. You've got a 16 power Galactus being triggered in that lane. Pretty good, pretty hard to beat, very powerful, right? You could also just, if you didn't see that same Spider-Man, you can just drop a, um, you, if you have a Jeff in one lane, you can go Wong, Nomura, have yourself a nice, powerful Jeff, um, and then another card, who cares, Nico, whatever, and then you can Odin that, and that's going to win you a reasonable number of games, especially because Jeff can move. Um, if you had Sage in that lane, so much the better, right? Then you've got the Jeff to move, and then you've got the stupid big Sage that you're going to end up Odining, so on and so forth. Cool. And obviously, while Wong is extremely powerful, if you didn't see um, Wong and you saw Scarlet Spider, you can, and you had that empty lane, you can go Spider into Namora, trigger Namora twice right away. Very, very powerful stuff. Then turn six, you're going to Galactus and um, trigger for Spider, or you can drop Odin. I really want Taskmaster here. I can't help it. I think Taskmaster would be great. But you're going to drop Odin to either re Namora, re um, Cassandra, or Sage. At, and just like sort of go over the top this list is awesome this is super powerful again this is the best galactus has felt in i believe his change was literally last uh october this is the best galactus has felt since last october try this list out right after this next little bit we're going to talk about silver sable but one last look at this list oh sorry um i guess this was obvious in my head but sometimes you just throw a green goblin in a lane to help clog an opponent that makes your galactus more likely to go off and win the game right um, sometimes you do that in a lane that you have Jeff so that you can move Jeff out. And when you move Jeff out, Jeff out, that Galactus suddenly becomes surprising instead of, um, really predictable in an empty lane. There's a lot of stuff like that you can do. Again, this is really cool. I think that this deck is awesome and I urge you to try it out. It's got like a million different little tricks and I think it's a very, very exciting build. If your meta is full of junk, don't play this. I've uh, been playing a deck with Debris that I really have to find time to feature. It had a 75%, 73%, something like that, win rate in the top 1,000 with it last season, so I've got to find time to feature it. Maybe that'll be tomorrow's main feature. But I've been playing that, so this deck hasn't given me trouble, but when I played this deck against what the meta is doing, this felt insanely good. This is the best Galactus has been. Please give it a try. And if you'd like to see some gameplay for this, please check out the stream team. Today is Wednesday, so the great Game of Flash X will be trying these decks out. So please go check out the homie Flash. Prashawn should have a video up sometime today with yesterday's decks. And tomorrow will be the awesome Perry Manilow. So make sure you check these out if you're interested in gameplay from these decks. Next up, we have Googly Bounce. Googly is an Italian player um, who created this bounce list. This bounce list is sort of... Uh, how do I put this? A descendant of the deck that finished first in January. Cool. In January, .geo played a bounce Annihilus list to first place on the infinite leaderboard. Uh, in the height of the Thanos meta, it was just so good it was able to take it out with a four freaking cost werewolf. Googly, who has more or less stopped playing Marvel Snap, came back when Silver Sable came out to literally make this deck. This is a very cool and very powerful deck, but I think Googly missed something important in it. So you can find Googly at twitter.com slash googly89. He used to stream all the time. Um, and like this is actually going to be here where the question of the day is. I'm just going to do this all together. Some quick Marvel Snap lore. There was a big uh, time around the turn of the year, around when 2023 20, became 2024, from basically December to like February, where um, the Italian meta was insane in Marvel Snap. They were just phenomenal. They fell off the game. They decided that they didn't like the monetization and they didn't like the way the game's lack of competitive features and basically all the italians um comey still plays a bit that geo still plays a bit but almost none of the others or uh, die cavallo still plays 
uh, but almost none of the others really play anymore or really play competitively anymore. But they were like many, many spots in the top of the infinite leaderboard. They were sort of like what Woody's crew is now, the uh, Yacht crew. Apparently, they're the Yacht crew now. But like, um, they dominated the game. They dominated tournaments. They won um, the Snap World Championships, the league tournament um, that Johnson started, and they just dominated Marvel Snap. They eventually sort of fell off the game and left. So Googly saw Silver Sable come out, remembered uh, Geo's deck that he was number one with in February, and basically um, and basically made him a present of the old deck by I updating it. Sable, Ham, and Nico are replaceable in this deck with Rocket, Iceman, Korg, and so on. White Widow, Grandmaster, and White Widow can be Grandmaster and Baron Mordo. I'm telling you, Baron Mordo is better than people think in Bounce now that Arishim's almost gone. Um, Werewolf is needed. Cersei or Annie can be Viper. And I think that's the big thing here. Annie is, I don't think Annie's actually good in this list anymore. I think Annie really wants to be Viper so that you can do other things with it. Um, which is going to lead to our question of the day. You can choose which one you want to answer. Question one is, do you enjoy the little look at the lore, the um, history of the game stuff during videos when it's relevant for a deck? Or should I just stick to talking about like how the deck plays? The other question is, Annihilus spent a long time as basically the best card in Marvel Snap, like, or one of the five best cards in Marvel Snap, and it is, because of Cersei, because of Viper, because of the changes in meta, almost unplayed now. Do you think Annie should get a buff? And if so, what buff do you think that should be? You don't have to, like, decide, but, like, what do you think should happen to Annie? Is Annie fine the way it is? What should happen to Annihilus? All good? Turn one, Hood and Sable are better than the others. Turn two is usually White Widow over two ones. Turn three, please Werewolf. Turn four, Sentry, or you can start getting a bounce going. Um, one of the problems I have with this deck is the negative two power on Sentry makes it a little more awkward to Sentry this early. Um, I very often would rather just sort of forego Sentry, and then I don't really have anything I want on Nihilus or Cersei sometimes. Turn five, Cersei or Nihilus. Turn six, move the Wolf and Shang-Chi. You may end up flipping five and six as necessary. Things to consider here. Um, as far as the deck goes, this is a... I played this. It was really good. But I felt like it was almost there. Um, Cersei... Annie doesn't go with Mockingbird especially well, but Cersei does. So perhaps um, Mockingbird is a consideration and Viper is a consideration for this list. Cool. One last look. Welcome back, Googly. Hopefully he sticks around and hopefully he chills with uh, his enjoyment of the game. Also, I very rarely do this. Uh, when I have a hip, but I went and bought the Captain America Falcon because I really like the Steward Dominant variant, and I had to have it. Oh. Okay, we're gonna let's review some bundles. All right, the Silk bundle, the hundred dollar bundle, two hundred eleven percent progress is great. Three thousand collector tokens is great. Two spotlight keys is great. Two thousand gold is great. I don't care about borders, but they're there. The cosmetics are sort of whatever. It's um. If you don't have Silk, though, you do get a Series 4 card out of this that you could play, even though Silk doesn't really have any more for you to be playing her right now. This is a top-line value, big money bundle. However, caveat, capital C, caveat. The web shop bundles that are in the web shop for just the rest of today, the ones that are like the reward for doing the um, your stats at the end of the season, are 230%. That's like 20, I mean, that's not like... They're 24% better than this. If you're going to spend $100, unless you were like immediately dying to use these spotlight keys and tokens, I would strongly urge you to buy those other cheaper <clears throat> cheaper bundles with better progression value than this. However, as a $100 bundle, this is about as good as it gets nowadays. So if you're in the market to immediately get a card, if you're like, I just really need Mockingbird, I get it, go get this, it's fine. Next up, we have the sp uh, Spicy Spider Snack. This is another really good bundle. So generally speaking, how bundles go, and I'm going to say this every time, I'm really sorry, long-term viewers, but 170% is what they usually charge us for bundles. Oh, oh, this is the full month bundle. That's why it's so good. 170% is usually what they give us for bundles. Well, the 200% um, bundle is therefore a very good bundle. As soon as we start to get above 200%, now we're hitting the great bundle. 211%, 10, <clears throat> excuse me, 10% above what I usually recommend. Awesome. The 235%, though, is through the roof value, and just, again, better value than that. Go on the Marvel Snap web shop, marvelsnap.com shop, and those are the bundles to get. However, however, again, huge caveat, 
if you don't have Ghost Spider, this is a way to play with Ghost Spider. Next week, if you're planning on getting uh, Madame Web, if in two weeks you want Aranya, you're going to want Ghost Spider. I don't think you're going to want Silk, but you're going to want Ghost Spider. And if you want Ghost Spider, then you might... Um, this is an easier way to get her than spending 3,000 tokens. All good? One more. Black Widow's... Um, 3,200 gold bundle. Please do not buy this. There is a much better gold bundle with, I believe, Kitty Pride, of all things, a Series 4 card, coming soon. This is a terrible bundle, one of the worst values. You are basically just paying for the variant here and not for the cosmetics. This bundle is garbage. All good? Are we good with the bundles? We get all what to do? Um, if you must have Silk for some reason, who's not a good card right now, or you have immediate use for the uh, collector's token and spotlight caches, you should buy this. If you need Ghost Spider, this looks like a good buy. If not, the web shop versions of this are better. And then we have the Widow's Web, which is a... I see it just turned itself off and now I'm worried. Uh, and then we have the Widow's Web, which is an absolute do not buy. You are literally spending 3,200 gold for um, base progression. You, you're basically just buying credits at that point. All right, next up, we have the Crazy Thor's list. FAK Crazy was the number one player in both March and April on the Infinite Leaderboard. He still chills out around the top 20 to 40, um, and he has this really great Thor's list he played at the top of the ladder last season. I think that this deck is really cool, and I wanted to show you something a little different so you don't feel like you have to be playing the new hotness. This list is strong. Cool. All right, so you can find Crazy streaming all the damn time at twitch.tv slash crazymsnap. He's really entertaining. Go check him out. Pixie, Mobius, and Beta Ray Bill are all needed. Uh, Eliath is great for this list, but you'd be fine with Doom. And Nico and Jeff can just be Nightcrawler, Iceman, or Nightcrawler, uh, Medusa, or whatever other nonsense you're in the mood for. Just a cheap, a couple cheap cards. So again, you need Pixie, Mobius, and Beta Ray Bill. If you have those three cards, you are good to go here. This has a 62% win rate in about 50 games of high infinite. Turn one, you're Nikoing if you can either turn Pixie into a demon or um, turn Pixie into, or sorry, destroy Pixie to draw two. If you have Mobius and Pixie, please snap when you Pixie. Turn three, you Mobius. If you had Pixie, if not, you play Thor. If you um, immediately can read that your opponent's going to make you play Mobius and you have Thor and Beta Ray Bill, and you don't have Jane, I'll often just play Mobius and the Mater Ray Bill. Just fine. Um, the reason, or maybe, um, or if otherwise, you can always end up Thoring and Lockjawing. That's also perfectly fine to play. Turn four, you Mater Ray Bill or Lockjaw. It depends what you have. If you have Jane, sometimes I prioritize Mater Ray Bill, sometimes I prioritize Lockjaw. If I have Wasp, all of a sudden Lockjaw is better. You get here. Turn five, Jane or drops into Jaw and that's better than Vision. You, generally speaking, would really like to Jane here, though, because if you have Lockjaw out, you can drop a Wasp into Lockjaw and still play either a Lyoth or a Magneto and whatever hammers. And obviously, you can put all the hammers and Wasp into Lockjaw in one turn now, which is what makes this deck a real viable thing to be doing once more when it hadn't been for so long. That's how you play this deck. It's really, really simple and much more powerful than it seems. I strongly urge you to give it a chance. Hey, my AC has decided to work again. That's nice. I thought that died. I was like, oh, well, there goes an extra couple hundred bucks. All right. Questions of the day, and then we're done. We actually have a whole bunch today. So the first, well, the first two weren't really questions. Moaz Amali mentions Silver Sable in Cerebro 3. I can't believe I didn't think of that. I can't believe no one's told me about that. We haven't talked about that at all. I think Silver Sable in Cerebro 3 is a brilliant idea. Um, I don't think Cerebro 3 is the right call for the meta right now, but when Cerebro 3 is good, let's remember Silver Sable is probably the best one drop for it. Um, Jackie Wang says Silver Sable and Celine with Dr. Octopus is probably really good, and I can't help but agree. I think there's probably a junk bounce deck that makes that worthwhile. He suggests, uh, or sorry, excuse me, they, I don't know your gender, excuse me, uh, they suggest a high evolutionary deck for that. I don't think that wants to be high evolutionary, but I do think that that is very likely in uh, sort of a junk bounce deck, or not, even if not bounce, sort of a junk tempo deck. That runs cards like Man Thing. I think that that seems really, really strong, and I like it a lot. Uh, I'm going to wait a couple weeks for Luke Cage to disappear again, and then I'm going to give that a try. Jink asks what card needs a boost like Atuma, and the easy answer that everyone always gives are Kang and Warlock, and that's fine. Kang and Warlock do need uh, changes. They fundamentally need redesigns at this point, but 
I think the real place to go is to work on more four drops. Four drops are very rarely played in Marvel Snap. There's like a couple good four drops and then like a million bad ones. So I'm going to say White Queen and Namor are the two I most want changed. In fact, I really wish they had just given a Tuma's buff to Namor. I think it's a much more fun card at that point. I think it's a much more interesting card at that point, and Namor is a much freaking better and more important character than Atuma. So I wish that Namor has buff had gone to Atuma, but White Queen also desperately needs a buff. She is a fundamentally unplayable card. Greg is fun. Ask Apple Cider Ice Cream Donut or Apple Cider Slushy. The real answer is the ice cream in the slushy with the donut on top. But if I could only have one, it would be the slushy. However, I'm going to complain about something that's very, like, la-di-da privilege complaining. Um, I don't love apple picking. I don't love paying to go do an activity that people do as their job. I don't know why it bugs me, but it, like, it breaks my brain, and I don't like doing it. I go apple picking every year. We go with um, my son's friend's family. We always have a really good time, but it just something about it never sits quite right to me. That is my stupid complaint of the day. All right, uh, Cupidy wants to know what I think of the Deadpool's Diner results, and we're just going to go, here's the Deadpool's Diner results. And, um, okay, 253,657 people earned Cassandra Nova. Um, 91,000 players finished the Deadpool's Diner, i.e. got the Cassandra Nova variant. I don't actually give a crap about literally any of the rest of these stats. Those are the only stats I'm interested in because... Um, my basic logic has always been that if you hit infinite, it seems reasonably likely that you would get Cassandra Nova, and probably, because if you did one and wanted to do the other, you have the ability to grind, you probably could. I don't think it was actually much harder to get the uh, variant than it was to get Cassandra Nova. At that point, my C is literally turning on and off. I feel like I'm losing my damn mind. Uh, here we are. So that Cassandra Nova is about what I would assume infinite is. Now, according to untapped stats, at least about 100,000 people a season get infinite at this point in the game. We don't know what percentage of the player base hits infinite, right? But we know about 100,000 people hit infinite, and about 100,000 people finished um, the diner. So I'd assume... A few more people, like, I'd assume the number of people that hit infinite in a given season is somewhere like 130,000. It's somewhere probably between that 253,000 and that 91,000, which I think is really interesting and useful information, um, but this is highly speculative. So it's not information I'm willing to do anything with, act, take any sort of action or draw any sort of real conclusions for. It's just sort of my working theory at this point. Because we don't have the whole, because we don't have, um, what the fraction is out of, right? Two that 253,657 out of X would be really useful information, but they don't want to tell us how many people play the game, which I understand and respect, and so this information has limited. Certain tiers of support on our Patreon come with honor. Thanks. I gotta be up at five in the morning tomorrow, so let's do this fast, my lovely friends. I'm gonna say thank you to the great Abigail Giesel, Mandatory Burnout Cables, irregardless, David J. Wingfield, Dire Wolf, LAB, Father, Newman, Good Dog Gamer, Deus Vault, Inc., I Am Frostman, Jane Everett, Corwin, Prime Brian, Ryan Burke, Caretix Lee, Koi Ray, Black Dahlia, the uh, Pyrofrost, The Goat Seeker, Demon Falcon, Quid Pro Joe, King of New Marvel's Not Card Content, Dr. Fadner, Ginger Prime, Ra Philip Brackovich, who's having a wonderful vacation, I hope, Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone, Rob Silverman, The Biz, Extra Fiends, Skippy G, Tommy Nyquist, uh, Winner of Snatchers League Season 1, King of Bros, Brock, Grey Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Kevsi Hoda, Lunacris, Quantum Quinn, John Q, Clam, 8th Sage, Models of the Mod Supreme, Darth Tater, Joe P, Brian Kaufman, Tristan H, Martin, John B, J, D, McDonald, Nino, The Fuzzy Dunlop, Spectrum X, Hoot, Matt H, DJ Mikey, I Jinx, No, Freaking Flex, Oculars, Mr. Craig Starry, Seamus, Jonesy, Two Ties, The Great Lauren, but I was the parking tucker, the homie minute, and of course, Gunny T, and the T stands for, sorry, I rushed through that, my dear friends, uh, my son's school hasn't started, but my work has, so I've got to wake up at the crack of dawn to take him to my father's house so he has somewhere to be during the day while everybody else is at work. So I will um, be very tired tomorrow, but we will, as always, have a video for you anyway on Thursday. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Click below if you would like to see some really cool decks. I got some cool stuff for you. Don't miss out, including what I think is the best and strongest position deck in the game. Peace.